When you get to the stones, you've already made a pocket underneath that rock. So all you need to do is lift out your stone, press it down in with the weed barrier fabric, and then put your stone back. When you put your hardscape down, that stone will look very, very natural. I know I am repeating myself when I say, make sure you overlap the edge at least three to four inches so that you can turn it under, tuck it down, and pin it. Because if you do not do that, you'll have a problem with stretching of that fabric. It'll stretch away from the edge. Then you're going to have weeds come up on the inside. And we don't want to have that. That is a big problem. Now we're at the point of working our weed barrier fabric right up next to our stone. Remember when we made our stone wall we left a nice big flap of weed barrier underneath so that we can lay this fabric right on top of that and it will make a nice even fabric roll for us. Here I've added a wonderful coral bell. One of my absolute favorite hercurias is Frosted Violet from Monrovia. If you have not used coral bells, these are one of the best accents that you can add to any landscape project. Here at the top of my wall, I want to leave a little overlap of fabric so that I can tuck it under and pin it down so that it matches the flap that I left on the top of the wall when we put the wall in. I use fabric pins also on the top of the wall, but what I also like to do, and it helps keep it secure, if you can move some of those top stones, then you pick them up and tuck that fabric underneath and pin it, and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now it's time for bark. This is one of my favorite things in the world, to watch these guys load my bark. And again, we went back to Red Flint Rock and Stone in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Here we're using golden bark that will accent our rock wall and our plantings. I've heard many times people say, I don't use bark because it's more maintenance. Stone is less maintenance. Well, in a way you're right. But if you put just a thin layer of bark down the first year, the next season all you need to do is top dress it lightly to bring your color back. Then your third year, Maybe rake off the first little bit of layer and add a top dress, and the fourth year, replace. But it is beautiful. Its accent allows you to change. You could add red one year, you could add brown one year, you could completely change it up, take it all off, and add stone. But stone is there to stay, so when you're choosing your hardscape, there's a lot of different choices to make. 
now that our project is done, let's recap. We had a green lawn. That's where we needed our pile of soil. Eight yards to be exact. Then we set out to put our edging in. We raked and we tilled and we packed and we pounded until finally I cannot wait to show you what it looks like now. This is the winter look and I am excited to show you next year the spring look. Today's episode of Garden Wise Living is using hardscape in your landscape. I would like to say a special thank you to Red Flint Rock and Stone and Steve Slatner for inspiring us to get out there and do some hardscape. Our concrete bullet edges came from County Materials in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And for the best down-to-earth protection, use DeWitt Weed Barrier Fabric. Thank you very much, DeWitt. When choosing plants, only choose the best. Bailey's Nurseries and Monrovia Growers. Garden Wise Living is produced by Arlena Schott of Garden Wise Productions. If you would like more information on what you've seen on this show or other shows, log on to our website, gardenwiseliving.com, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Now for a special thank you to my husband, Steve Schott, his friends Jeff Rick and Stan Durvin for the beautiful music played today on Garden Wise Living. I'm your host, Arlena Schott, and don't forget to garden wise.